Om Sahana Bhavatu Sahana Bunaktu Sahaviyam Karavavahai Tejas Vinavadi Tamastu Ma Vidvi Shavahai Om Shanti 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 Hi Om Blur Sakuru Shivananda Rajaki And for all of the saints and sages of all the traditions Jai Om Okay. So we're in this discussion of the law and dynamics of um, thought power, laws and dynamics. We closed yesterday, we were talking about how similar thoughts attract each other. Um, similar people and similar thoughts. People and thoughts are the same darn thing. People and the thoughts are identical. Uh, in the Gita, 17th chapter, Lord Krishna is teaching the trifold faith. And he says the person and his or her active faith are one and the same. So the person is constructed by whatever your beliefs are. Um, active beliefs, whatever you, whatever you activate, whatever you... You can say one thing and do another, and that other would be uh, emblematic of your active belief, right? Ah. <laughs> so what you believe in and you do is really the definition of the person. And we were talking about the countenance of the person, the appearance of the person, the face, how the face is chiseled, the eyes, the clarity in the eyes, all of this is related to the thought nature. Uh, and so he, he says in this, similar thoughts attract each other. And then right away he talked about how people who have similar thoughts attract each other. So it's really the magnetism of the thoughts. Okay. So in the vein, it says a songster loves another songster, a philosopher likes another philosopher, etc. He says, carry any, th any kind of thought you please about with you, and so long as you retain it, no matter how you roam over the land or sea, you will unceasingly attract to yourself knowingly or inadvertently exactly and only what corresponds to your own dom dominant quality of thought. Thoughts are your private property, and you can regulate them to suit your taste entirely, by steadily recognizing your ability to do so. So, I, if you look back and you see the interests are what are attracted. Now, positive and negative both. Yeah, <laughs> but it's in the field of the interests. Huh. Okay. And then the contagion of thoughts. And he talks about Spanish flu, which was which was a thing a hundred years ago. Now I would say COVID and the contagion of thoughts. Uh, uh, so we can insert, search and replace, insert COVID and the contagion of thoughts. Mental actions are real actions. Thought is the real action. It is a dynamic force. It may be remembered. Thought is very contagious. That is more contagious than COVID. A, a simple, a sympathetic thought in you raises a sympathetic thought in others with whom you come in contact. A thought of anger produces a similar vibration in those who surround an angry person. It leaves the brain of one person and enters the brains of others who live at a long distance and excite them and excites them. A cheerful thought in you produces cheerful... And, and by the way, we can talk about COVID for a second. And so, um, vax, anti-vax. You can say, for example, well, but I believe that we shouldn't vaccinate, and I seem to also attract people that believe we should. And so, of course, because positive, negative. Whatever your field of interest, that's what you'll attract. 
So if your life is about vaccination, then everybody who attracts to you will have an interest in vaccination one way or the other. And so it'll give you the potential to fill your life with arguments about vaccination. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> you see? And it'll be like, that's all anybody cares about. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> but then a cheerful thought in you produces cheerful thoughts in others. You're filled with joy and intense delight when you see a batch of hilarious children playing mirthfully and dancing in joy. A thought of joy in us creates sympathetically a thought of joy in others. So do sublime, elevating thoughts. So keep, but then he says, keep a good and honest person in the company of a thief, he'll begin to steal. Keep a sober person in the company of a drunkard, he'll begin to drink, and thought is very contagious. So does the contagion, does that resonate? Oh, okay. And then he talks about psychological law. Um, and how to apply it. He says, keep the heart young. Do not think I have become old. To think I have become old is a bad habit. Do not entertain the thought. At 60, think I am 16. As you think, so you become. This is a great psychological law. So, ah, uh, yeah, it's true. So when I was, um, many years ago, um, just out of high school, I took a Dale Carnegie course, and I heard one thing. I, I I heard a couple of things, but one of them I immediately put into practice, which was I had a habit of telling myself I forget. Somebody would ask me something, and I would say immediately in response, "I, I'm sorry, I forget." That's what I would say, um, and I heard this then <laughs> and so what i heard i should say to myself is and to the person i'm talking with which is which is the same is hmm, in just a moment it'll come <laughs> just a moment it'll come and invariably it does but if you say this is this is this law. It's a psych basic psychological law. Uh -huh. But if you say, I can't remember, then you close the door. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh -huh. So what he's sharing is in the same, the same line, same law. So don't think, don't say, I'm old. Don't say, I'm stupid. Don't say, I don't know. That's a, now, that's an interesting one. That's an interesting one. It's better in that case just not to say anything. <laughs> because you also don't necessarily want to say, I know, because that's the one coming from ego. <laughs> so, it says, as a man thinketh, so he becometh. This is a great truth of truism or truism. Think I am strong, and strong you become. Think I am weak, and weak you become. Has anybody ever done the, um, what's, it, what's it called? What's coming is energy test, but I'm not sure if that's the name of it. Where, yeah, where someone will um, ask you to stand up. Have you done it? Kinesiology. Yeah, exactly. I, if you tell the truth, you're strong. If you tell a lie, you're weak. Yeah. You familiar with it? Sorry? Muscle, muscle, muscle test. test. Muscle test. That's what we generally call it. Yeah. Have you done? No? Okay. Okay. Uh, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Um, Okay, Radha, please. You'll come up here. Okay. Let's do this for folks that are joining us online. All right. So, ah! Okay, 
Are you okay to do this? I don't know what I'm doing, but sure. <laughs> well, it's not, good. it's not being embarrassing or okay. anything, so don't Perfect. worry. Here, let's stand and face this way. Okay. Now. Um, it, also, it also just requires an openness to believe that it works, because if you're immediately like, this isn't going to work, um, you're like, thanking the belief below all of the others. Yeah, but even then, it's okay. Mm -hmm. no, it's fine, because yeah. it's still fine. So what I'm going to ask you to do is raise your arm. You can raise your left arm like that. And then hold it firm. Hold it as firm as you can. And I'm going to touch with this hand here and see if we can push it down. Okay, so hold it firm. Okay. Very good. So we can do it eventually. All right, now you can set it back down. And then the next part of this is we're going to ask you to Raise that arm again and say and think, I am strong. And that's just, that's going to be the thought. I am strong and think it as well. Okay, are you ready? Mm -hmm. All right. And you can say that loud. I am strong. I am Indeed. strong. Oh. I am strong. I am strong. Okay, now do you feel that? That was the same as the, yeah. the pressure was the same as the first time, but the hand didn't move nearly as far, right? Okay, now I hate to do this, yeah. well, but we'll close it on the positive note again. But, the, but now just say and think, I am weak. 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 <laughs> Isn't that something? Yeah. All right, can we end it though? I'm yes. strong? Okay. I am strong. I am strong. I am strong. Okay. You wow. See? <laughs> so that's the muscle test. And even if you have some idea that it won't work, it'll still work to a great extent. So that's the law. That's the law. So don't think to yourself, I'm weak. Don't think to yourself, I'm stupid, etc. Don't think to yourself and repeat to yourself, I don't know. You can say in place of that, I'm learning. <laughs> I'm learning. It's a good one to, to use there. That's why you see and I have that problem. Like, oh man, I'm in pain. Right. Indeed. That's it. Also, just to replace that predicate, I would to say I had that problem. Yeah. Because then it doesn't say it's something that I currently have. Right. Or like, or like starting out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Rada. We've come to this before. And we've just talked through it. And this time I was like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> so thank you very much. You see that, right? You see how much of a difference it makes. Yeah, uh, and it's, uh, it's also a great lie detector in the, in the same way. If someone tells a lie, okay, I mean, you'll see it here. Um, and sometimes we'll do it with tell me your name. And you'll tell me the, the name that you associate yourself with first and then another name that you don't. And so it'll be the it'll be exactly the same. And so you can imagine that if it's there, it's also here, right? And if it's here, it's here, and it's my inner world. So it, when we do tell untruths, for example, we create that kind of an inner world. It's a very weak, powerless, um, really obnoxious inner world and, and when we tell truth, when we speak truth, satyam, then it becomes a powerful yeah. inner world and the outer continent, countenance is the same. When you try to run away from things, it's, yeah, <laughs> oh, <laughs> don't do that, don't do that, don't start and definitely if you've started, get it over with, tell the truth. <laughs> It says, thought alone, ah, here, think I am a fool, fool you become. Think I am a sage or God, sage or God you become. Thought alone shapes and molds a person. Man lives always in a world of thoughts. Every man has his own thought world. Imagination works wonders. Thought has tremendous force. Thought, as already said, is a solid thing. You present the result. Your present, sorry, is the result of your past thoughts and your future will be according to your present thoughts. If you think rightly, you will speak rightly and act rightly. Speech and action simply follow the thoughts. That, oh. 
So he says, understand the laws of thought. And, um, and of course, this is not something taught in school. But it's most fundamental. It's the most fundamental understanding in terms of how to conduct oneself in this, in this life, is understanding the, the laws of thought. Everyone should have a comprehensive understanding of the laws and thoughts and their operations. Then alone can he live in a world smooth in this world smoothly and happily. It says he can neutralize the hostile forces or antagonistic currents. Just as the fish swims against the current, so also he will be able to go against the hostile currents by adjusting himself properly and safeguarding through suitable precautionary methods. Otherwise, we become a slave. This is the this is the point. This is it. Um, and this is so common. Really, we take this birth. This human birth is called a mixed birth. So you're divine. You're not a human. You're having a human experience. Um, the human birth is said to be a mixed birth. Um, purgatory. <laughs> Honestly, that. The concept, the Christian concept of purgatory, this is actually it. Because it's the place you come to purge or transcend, to get out of the harmful habitual stuff that has been limiting you and binding you to a frame, binding you to identification as a person or as a thing instead of the divine, instead of the infinite. Um, so... It's only the limiting thoughts that limit you. And that's what's shared. It's only the limiting thoughts. Only the thought, I am a man, I am a woman. I am young, I am old, I am not capable. All of this, all of this, that's it. I am separate. It starts there. And that thought is a feeling, and it's and it's as if wrapped around the heart, and that's that avidya or primal nescience, and it starts there. I am alone, meaning I need something. I'm in need of something. That feeling, which becomes a thought, and then when that thought is predominant and all of the other thoughts are related to that, then we're a slave to that. That's the situation, but we're not slaves because we're divine. We're spirit. We're not this body. And that's the thought that's finally needing to change, understanding the way that that thought works. And granted, it's step by step to do it. Um, when Chandika was out, uh, she was with us for almost a week, and I mentioned this before. She's. Uh, uh, she works with computers. She's a computer programmer of sorts, database programmer like that. And um, we were talking about a, a piece of computer software. And the software really defines how the system operates. So the, so the cell phone back here operates according to its software. It has hardware, just like this is hardware. The, the phone has hardware. It's the computer chip and the memory and the, and the shape of it and the touchscreen and all of that. That's the hardware. But without software, it doesn't, without thought, it won't do anything. It will just sit there. You'll try to turn it on and it won't turn on. Huh. So when you turn on the smartphone and start to engage with it, you're actually engaging with the software. And that's thought, the way it thinks. It doesn't have subjective consciousness in the way that you do. But still, that phone is thinking, and this is also thinking. And it's not different than that computer. This is not different than that computer. This is a computer. The only, the only functional difference is two. First, that you can realize yourself and the phone can't. And secondly, that you're the programmer, not someone else. Someone else programmed that phone. You programmed this. 
And you continue to program it, and you can change the program. And the program is always being changed. When we're, when we're involved, when we go into that, that pastry shop and we order that croissant, the program is being changed. And now it's a different program. And now it's like the phone, instead of doing this, now goes into the croissant shop every morning. And it goes and asks for a raise. <laughs> That's what the Yoga Sutra says, like the goal is to stop the modifications of the mind. Yeah, stop it. Stop it. Stop going there. <laughs> and what we do practically in order to stop it is fill the computer with something else, something that's beneficial right now, right. ultimately right now. Uh, so if the computer says, I'm not what I thought I was. <laughs> Um, but as long as we don't know that we're programming and we've started with this fundamental bit of firmware, the center of the, the center of the code, like when you turn that on, what does it do? It, it does, has a boot up sequence. When you turn this on, that is when you come out of deep sleep and this mind gets rebooted, what's first? Is the feeling of separation and the feeling of lack first? Yes. That's the human experience. It starts with the feeling of lack coming, booting up, coming out of deep sleep. What do I need? What do I need? What do I have to do today? But for what? For me to get what I need. Mm. And so that first bit of code in the program is an error. That's what we were talking about. It's an error. And, and activities related to correcting that error are said to be activities that lead one towards freedom, and that is yoga. Yes? So you're working with the program. You're rewriting the program. You're saying, okay, I'm going to do what's beneficial today. I'm not going to do for me. I'm not going to try to get something. Because at some level, I understand that I'm actually not separate, even though it feels that way. Uh, and so my day today will be an offering. How will I offer? That's a reprogramming. Yes. That's yoga. Uh, I'll live selflessly. I won't put myself first. I'll put the good of the whole first. I'll put God first, however it is. That's yoga. And that leads you towards freedom. But, but when we continue in the vein of, I need, I must have, I cannot, I must, all of this related to that error, which is the feeling of being separate, when we do that, then we remain a slave. What are we a slave to? We're a slave to an artificial, a false limitation. It's a feeling of limitation and it's false. And, and therefore a slave. Is that? So a, a slave by our own thoughts. Nobody else did it. Hmm. There was a basic mis misunderstanding. And realizing this, then the thoughts have to go a different direction. Hmm. And understanding more about the laws of thought, which is what we're doing here, then you can end that condition where you've been tossed about by the thought currents. Right? I, you know, feelings come. Um, everything comes and everything goes through this. It's like it, it's like the ocean in here. And the waves rise and the waves fall. You know. So everything is about coming and going. It seems. But but to the extent that that coming and going is moving us and shaking us and causing us to be angry one moment and sad another moment and joyous for a moment <laughs> and just continually 
whipped through all of this, to that extent, we're slaves. Yes, we've allowed this, not knowing, not knowing, and that's the truth. It's not, it's not that we knew and did something else, it is that we really didn't know. As we said, this is not taught in school. Um, most people don't know about the power of their thoughts. And if we don't know about the power of our thoughts, what to do? You know, we have to come to a place where we begin to, where we begin to recognize it. it. Says, understanding the laws of thought, you can mold or shape your character in any way you like. The common saying, as one thinketh, so he becometh, is one of the great laws of thought. Think you are pure, and pure you will become. Think you are noble, noble you will become. Become an embodiment of good nature. Think good of all. Do always good actions. Serve, love, give. Make others happy. Live to serve others. Then you will reap happiness. You will get favorable circumstances or opportunities and environments. If you hurt others, if you do scandal mongering, mischief mongering, backbiting, tail bearing, if you exploit others, which is like the undercurrent of society in this, in this age. Everybody seems to have problems with others and say this about others and is just interested in what others are doing. And this is such a strong undercurrent. Uh, but if we engage in that, then you reap pain. Only pain comes to us. And you get unfavorable circumstances or opportunities and environments. This is the law of thought and nature. Just as you can build your good or bad character by sublime or base thinking, so also you can shape your favorable or unfavorable circumstances by doing good or bad actions. One of discrimination is always careful, vigilant, and circumspect. She always watches carefully her thoughts and she introspects. She knows what is going on in her mental factory and what vritti or guna is prevailing at a particular time. She never allows any evil thought to enter the gates of her mental factory. She at once nips them in the bud. By her good thinking, by watching the nature of her thoughts, by introspection. Oh, hello, sweetheart. By active noble thinking, the one of discrimination builds her noble character, forms her high destiny, and she is careful in her speeches. She speaks little, she speaks sweet, living words, loving words, and she never utters any kind of harsh words that can affect the feelings of others. It's coming down. Patience, it's coming. She develops patience, mercy, and universal love. She tries to speak truth. Thus, she puts a check on the Vak Indriya. The Vak Indriya is the tongue, the organ of speech. You, you know, not for nothing, but the quickest way for us to, to end a relationship is with the tongue. Right, what we say, um, what we say has such great power, and it sticks with it sticks in the atmosphere, and it stays in the relationship. Right, and you can say one bad thing, you can say one thing in anger, and the person you say it to will never forget it. That mind will never forget it. It's the. Um, it also has to do with the nature of mind, and that is, you can do so many sweet and loving things after. So much, so much. You can do so much for reparations and all of this. But, but that thought in the other person will remain the potential that you would do this again or that you would say this again. Mm. So this is one of the great powers of the yogi is to learn to stop this. Mm. <laughs> and not you can't just bottle it up because if you try to bottle it up, then it'll go again. But to work with the thoughts underlying that. Um, and then you can check it. 
Thus, he says, she, she develops patience, mercy, and universal love, and she tries to speak truth. Thus, she puts a check on the Vakindriya and the impulses of speech. She uses measured words. She writes measured lines. This produces deeply profound and favorable impression on the minds of the people. She practices ahimsa and brahmacharya in thought, word, and deed. She practices saucha and arjava. Ar um, saucha, we know, I think, cleanliness. Arjava is straightforwardness. She tries to keep up balance of mind and to be always cheerful. She keeps up Sudha Bhava, um, a simple attitude. She tries the three kinds of tapas, physical, verbal, and mental, and controls the actions. She cannot think any evil, finally. She cannot do any evil action. She prepares herself to get always favorable circumstances. She who spreads happiness will always get such favorable circumstances as can bring her happiness. She who spreads pain to others will doubtless get, according to the law of thought, such unfavorable circumstances as can bring her misery and pain. Therefore, mankind creates his own character and circumstances by the manner of his own thinking. But then, the salvation. Bad character can be transmuted into good one by one factor by one power, which is good thoughts. So bad character can be transmuted into good character simply by choosing to cultivate good thoughts and engaging in the practices and not stopping. Uh, and unfavorable circumstances can be changed into favorable circumstances simply by doing good actions. Okay. Um, Close there for the morning. Comments or questions on any of them? You have the entire power in your hands. <laughs> entire power. Yeah. That's it. Home. Oh. And whatever the circumstances are now, they won't they won't remain. And they're kind of like uh, I feel like I'm divine. So I have unlimited potential to be changed. And activating it and actually bringing it into 70 some thousand thoughts a day. So, yeah. Um, so bringing it into the day to day, bringing this attitude, this bhava into the day to day. Um, and the recipe is the same. It starts with seeing it and making the resolve. Making the resolve. If, if you make the resolve and it's firm, then you ask questions, you gain support. The tools are tools are available on all of this. And so, my goodness, such a beautiful example. You know, anger has been a thing, and so there's a question there, and there's a resolve to overcome it, isn't there? And then the tools come, yes, and you use the tools. The tools are placed in your hand, and you begin to use them. So invariably, you stick with it. And it'll change. This is it. This is the way it works. And life changes. And the entire experience of life changes. How you think is how you experience the, this life. Oh. I would like to say that I think Jules has done an amazing job changing in the last like year and a half. Like, amazing. Uh -huh. so. Well, I had a really good influence that was the opposite of me ways that I needed to work on. Oh, oh, yeah. Like I said, I hadn't had time earlier on. Right. Your heart to <laughs> grace, grace. We can say grace, and of course, um, self-effort, the ability to do this is actually grace. Oh. Um, Hari, any comments or questions? So yes, guard the gate of thoughts. Guard the gate of thoughts, very good, mm -hmm. yes. Oh, full-time guard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. All right, let's close with final prayers in RIT, page 174. Om. Om Triambakam Yajane.
Surandim Pushti Vardana, Vargai Vakneva Vandana, Mitchor Mushia Amrita, Om Triumphatam Yajame, Surandim Pushti Vardana, Vargai Vakneva Vandana, Mitchor Mushia Amrita, Om Triumphatam Yajame, Surandim Pushti Vardana, Vargai Vakneva Vandana, Mitchor Mushia Amrita, Om Sarve Sham Sastir Bhavatu, Sarve Sham Shantir Bhavatu, Sarve Sham Purnam Bhavatu, Sarve Sham Mangalam Bhavatu, Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina, Sarve Shantu Niramaya, Sarve Bhagavani Pashyantu, Akashi Dukabhadale, Asatoma Sankamaya, Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya, Vrinchor Maman Vrintam Gamaya, Om Purnamida Purnamidam Purnam, Purnam Udashyate, Purnasya Purnamadaya, Purnam Eva Vasishyate, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. O adorable Lord of mercy and love, salutations and prostrations unto thee. Thou art omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscient. Thou art Satchidananda. Thou art existence, knowledge, and bliss absolute. Thou art the indweller of all beings. Grant us an understanding heart, equal vision, balanced mind, faith, devotion, and wisdom. Grant us inner spiritual strength to resist temptation and to control the mind. Free us from egoism, lust, anger, greed, hatred, and jealousy. Fill our hearts with divine virtues. Let us behold thee in all these names and forms. Let us serve thee in all these names and forms. Let us ever remember thee. Let us ever seek thy glories. Let thy name be ever on our lips. Let us abide in thee forever and ever. And for all of the saints and sages of all the traditions. Yeah. Yeah.